What changes can the league make to bring more competitive balance to both sides of the ball? I, I know what they can do. Get rid of all the Europeans. <laughs> what? You just said it. <laughs> They're only state, just like the American Caucasian got put out of the game. So the NBA is considering whether or not they should switch it up and try to bring back some defense into the NBA. Almost every other week, there's a new player setting some kind of offensive record, whether for his team or for the league. What changes can the league make to bring more competitive balance to both sides of the ball? I, I know what they can do. Get rid of all the Europeans. <laughs> And so, of course, the initial knee-jerk response from this was Gilbert Arenas was trying to make this about race. And that couldn't be further from the truth. He was making it a point to specifically call out the Europeans and their style of play. Because we've always had the white Americans that could hoop. And if some of them were playing in today's game, they would be on the same level as a Luka. Jason Williams comes to mind. White chocolate. But as talented as Jason Williams was and as easy as he made the game for some of his teammates, he was atrocious on the defensive end. And so there's a reason why Sacramento traded for Mike Bibby. LeBron with his fifth rebound. Uh-oh. Mike Bibby with the block. And as soon as they traded for Mike Bibby, they started winning. And they should have won a championship. If it wasn't for Tim Donahue, the quote-unquote rogue referee, cheating for the Lakers, they would have won. They would have had a title. No doubt about it. Tonight, a former NBA referee says the playoff series between the Kings and Lakers in 2002 was fixed. 2002, it was unbelievable. It was the worst officiated game in my, my, of my sports writing career. We both covered that infamous, infamous game six, Sacramento, L.A in 2002 and all of us thought that there was right. just something drastically wrong because the los angeles lakers had 27 free throws in the fourth Absolutely. quarter like i said it's not a race thing like a lot of people tried to make it out to be when gilbert arena said what he said if you can hoop you can hoop if you can play defense you can play defense you go to college to learn defense. Yeah. What college hey, do Europeans yeah. go to? I'm with you. No, I just right? get rid they of don't them go to college whatsoever. Yeah. They have no athleticism. They, give some they come have over. no athleticism. They all come over. Hold go on. on. <laughs> they have no athleticism, mm -hmm. right? They have no speed, no jumping ability. They are a liability on defense. There's 150 year olds in the league today. Name the top 10 defenders. That's a good question. And so off the top of my head, I couldn't think of one European defender that was primarily known for his defense in the league today. And historically, the only defender coming out of Europe that I can think of that was known for his defense primarily would have to be Andre Karolinko, AK-47. Kobe around the screen, doubled. Madsen open, good rotation defense by the Jets. Kobe around the screen, ball away, Jets block the game. Andre Karolinko was somewhat of an athletic freak for European standards. You're talking about somebody that could step out on that floor and guard any position. But other than that, you'd be hard pressed to find a defender like that coming out of Europe. Because up until that point, up until Andre Karolinko showed up in league, the Europeans weren't known for their defense. They were known for their offensive skill sets like shooting, passing, and skill sets such as that. But when it came to defense, there was none. They were more so known for their flopping. And you might even say they introduced flopping to the league. For 13,000 points, over 9,000 rebounds, over 3,000 assists, and over 1,500 block shots. We thank you for that, and we thank you for the fact that in your career, you led our league above all others in flopping. He has to be the best flopper in history of the NBA. He would have passed at the flop. It's flopping, flopping, flopping. It's flopping it. And so that's a whole nother legacy that the Europeans have brought to the NBA. 
flopping. And so it's not that Europeans are incapable of playing NBA defense or lockdown defense. As I said earlier, Andre Karolinko is probably one of the better defenders in the history of the NBA because some of the elements that make great NBA defenders is number one, they need to be a great athlete. You're talking about some of the most athletic people in the world out there on that NBA court. Some of the highest jumpers, some of the fastest sprinters. And so number one, you need to be a good to great athlete. Number two, you gotta have good instincts. You gotta have good timing. You gotta have good anticipation. And number three, which is probably the most important one, is you gotta have heart. You have to have a certain level of desire and a certain level of pride to go out there and try to stop somebody whose job is on the line. Somebody whose next contract is on the line, whether or not they can put up 20 points a night. They have no athleticism, mm -hmm. right? They have no speed, no jumping ability. They are a liability on defense. There's 150 year olds in the league today. Name the top 10 defenders. Yeah, I'm, I, I, None. No, I'm with right? You. Just the Rudy Goldberg and Greek the Freak. Other than that, they're just offensive players. They're not defensive players, right? So the NBA took away aggression. Mm -hmm. mm. They took away aggression to open up the Euro League. When they first started getting here, it was too rough for them. Mm -hmm. And they, so they didn't make it. They didn't make it. Right? Oh, so no, eventually, yeah. they softened the rules. They didn't soften the rules for the Americans. They softened the rules to open it up international. Yeah. So when they're saying the Euros is going to run the league in the next five years, why do you think that? More threes, passing, cutting. This is not our league. This is not the American style. This is the Euro style. So Drive in, suck the defense in, pass the ball to the three-point line. It's the three-point shooting league because they're copying Euro style. San Antonio, I mean, uh, Suns, right? Uh -huh. What was the biggest thing the Suns didn't do? Defense. defense. I'm trying to Ole, score. let's go. Boom, let's go. Yeah, let's, yep. Seven yep. seconds. Yep. Right? Seven now, seconds. Seven, 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 now, seven, everybody, seven seconds. Now, everybody, we don't Tony. want to yeah, yeah, foul yeah. so we can go try to score. Yeah. Yeah. That was the whole We're going thing of Dan Tony. Yep. Right? That is what the league was created off of, to have more of those guys in so they can expand the business. Mm. Make it a global, global game. So, uh, global game. You remember pushing global game, global game. How are they going to have a global game if... It's too physical and too athletic for them. So they have to figure out ways where they can exist inside of the game. Wow. And so right? Gilbert Arenas just dropped a heavy jewel in which a lot of us already knew. Anybody who followed the NBA from the 90s and beyond could definitely see the shift in the NBA starting in the early 2000s. The NBA commissioner at the time, David Stern, has said as much that he wanted to make the NBA a global game. Basically, he wanted to open it up for Europeans. So the NBA is really not competitive anymore. It doesn't have that same level of competition like it used to have back in the 80s and 90s and even the early 2000s for that matter. So we've always had the players like Aluka and Nikola Jokic. But the only issue back then was if you didn't play defense and you couldn't move your feet, you weren't going to see the court like that. Best case scenario, you'd be a specialist. You'd be a three-point specialist, a spot-up shooter. You'd get about 20 minutes a game. That's probably best case scenario. As soon as the NBA made Steve Nash the MVP, back-to-back -back MVP at that, I knew exactly what the league was trying to do because there's no way in hell Steve Nash should have won an MVP over Kobe Bryant, over Shaquille O'Neal, over a LeBron James. I don't care how many wins that Suns team had. Steve Nash averaged 15.5 points a game and 11 and a half assists. You'd have to go all the way back to 1964 and 1968 to find a lower scoring average than what Steve Nash averaged back in 2004. And then we're talking about Bill Russell and Wes Unseld, respectively. Bill Russell averaged 14 points a game and 24 rebounds. Wes Unseld averaged almost 14 points a game with 18 rebounds. And they were also the best defensive players in the league. And then Steve Nash won it again with another low scoring average, 18.8 points a game, 10 and a half assists. And it's the same deal. Bill Russell, Bill Russell, Bill Russell. And like I said, Bill Russell is in a special category all until himself. Because Bill Russell was the MVP, not for his offense, but for his defense. 
And so, like I said, when Steve Nash won back to back MVP, I knew exactly what the league was trying to do. And that was in a Mike D'Antoni offense. I think Jeremy Lin actually had better numbers than Steve Nash. And then the following year, what did the NBA do? They gave the MVP to Dirk Nowitzki. Now I'm a Dirk fan. I'm a Dirk fan. But now you have three years in a row where you have the most valuable player in the league and they've never made an all defensive team. There's never been another MVP prior to this that hadn't made at least one all defensive team or a second all defensive team. And so that set a precedent. After that, the league started valuing offense and they started going away from defensive players, slowly kind of phasing them out. That's right around the time they started kind of phasing them out and they started devaluing those kinds of players and putting more of an emphasis on players that could score and players that could shoot. And in my opinion, and probably a lot of other people's opinions too, it ruined the game. It took away some of the character of the game. You know, watching a guy or watching a team jack up three pointers, that was always an exciting part of the game, but that was more of a side dish. That was never meant to be the entree, but the NBA made it the entree so they could open up the game to the European players. And here we are today. It's a glorified pickup game and a lot of flopping, but that's my take on it anyway. Make sure you guys chime in in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this. I know a lot of y'all probably feel the same way. I know a lot of y'all probably don't, but let's go ahead and talk about it in the comment section below. And as usual, peace and chaos.